In this video, we're going to continue working on our small medium shapes, and we are going to introduce some new nodes, which are warp and slope layer grayscale. All right, so before we get started, in the previous video, we labeled this section here as 01. This was like kind of the part one to this. Uh, actually, I'm just going to call this uh, small shapes for now, uh, because what we're actually going to work on right here is going to be more of our medium level shapes. Okay, so we're going to create some of these medium level shapes that we're then going to scatter across the surface. These are going to represent more medium level kind of dirt mounds and things like that. Uh, so in order to do that, before we can actually scatter the shapes, we need to create the shapes. So let's start that process first. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to do a search for shape. And here we have the shape node. Uh, we're going to create uh, an instance of this node. Now here for the pattern, I'm going to switch this to paraboloid and the tiling amount, I'm going to set this to a value of three. So now we have nine shapes here that are a paraboloid pattern. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is warp these shapes because right now they're perfect spheres and that's not going to look very good at all. So we actually have a warp node, so I'm going to hit the space bar. And here towards the bottom, you can see we have warp. Let's create an instance of this node. Now we're going to take the shape output and plug this here into the input. Now the warp takes a gradient as an input, and this is going to be the slope, and the slope value of the gradient is going to determine the overall warp effect. So what I'm going to do here is just use one of my noises. If I take a look here in my noises within the library, I'm going to use the Perlin noise. Uh, instead of trying to find it here, I'm just going to hit the space bar and do a search for it. So we'll start to type in Perlin noise, and we're going to use this guy here. Okay, so um, for the scale amount, uh, I'm just going to set this to a value of 7 here. And then I'm going to take the output here of this Perlin noise and place this here into the gradient input. Let's double click our warp so we can see what's happening here. So you can see if I set this to a value of 0, we get this perfect sphere. And if I start to increase this intensity value, we are essentially warping the paraboloid shapes based on the slope values from this Perlin noise. And so we're now getting this result. And again, as I mentioned in a previous video, we can overdrive this value so it seems to be capped at 1, but actually I could just type in a value of 2 because I want to get just a little bit more of an extreme value to this here. So that's how we can use a warp to warp shapes. So right now, uh, looking at these shapes, um, I kind of like some of the slopes that's been introduced here, uh, but the shapes are pretty big. So I'm going to basically kind of rein in some of these values. And to do that, I'm just going to use a levels. So here, I will hit my space bar. I'm going to create a levels and just connect this here. So now what I'm going to do is just take my input black and just move it towards the input white. And you can see that uh, if I just kind of keep it around this area here, uh, this is the types of shapes I can create. So now we went from having these perfect kind of sphere paraboloid shapes. Uh, we warp them based on a noise, and then we ran a levels, and now we're getting uh, more of a kind of outline shape like this that kind of starts to look more like a, like a rock shape. And so this is what we're going to go with. So now looking at these shapes here, zoom in my 2D view, what I'd like to do is kind of introduce some additional kind of planes to this. Like, uh, again, kind of going back to that modeling mindset, if I was using ZBrush and maybe using like a trim dynamic brush and I was just using that to kind of slice away uh, parts of a mesh to create uh, planes in the overall form, um, I can achieve a result like that using a node we call the slope blur grayscale. So I'm going to hit my space bar. And I'm going to start to type in slope, and you'll see here that we have two versions of this, slope blur and slope blur grayscale. I had mentioned before that many nodes have a color and a grayscale version, and depending on what you're doing, you're going to want to use the correct version. So since we're working in height, which is grayscale, we need to make sure we're using the slope blur grayscale. All right, so now that I have uh, this node created here, you can see that we have two inputs, a grayscale and a slope. So what the slope blur does is that it blurs an input image according to the gradient direction of this secondary input, which is our slope. So we're going to need a slope. 
And what I'm going to do is just reuse this Perlin noise. So just as we used it for the gradient input of the warp, we're also just going to reuse it here for the slope blur grayscale. So let's just make this connection here. Okay, so now we have our slope in place and we also now need this grayscale input which is going to be the result of our levels. So let's make this connection here into the grayscale. So double click so that we can view what's happening here in our 2D view. I'll hit F to focus the view to the window. So what you'll notice here in the instance parameters for this slope blur is a samples amount. This is basically a bunch of duplicates of this grayscale image. And the image pixels are being shifted. So if I double click this input, I can view the original input. So the image pixels are being shifted according to the values coming in from this slope. And with the default settings, this is what we are getting here. By increasing the samples, we are essentially increasing the quality of the result. Now, we have this intensity value, so you can see I can lower this intensity value here. So we'll, let's just keep it at a pretty low value for now. Uh, but the main thing here to bring your attention to is this mode. And if I click this drop down, we have three modes here, blur, min, and max. With blur, all the images are being averaged. So remember I said that what's happening here is uh, this is basically duplicating the image multiple times via the number of samples you have set here. And using the blur, all of these images are just being averaged together. If you use this min value, only the darker values are kept from each sample. And if we use the max value, only the maximum values are kept. So for example, if we switch this here to min and I start to increase the intensity, what happens here is if we take a look, let's just take a look at this sample here. It looks like some of these black values are basically being pushed in towards the white values. So here you can see if I set this to zero and I start to increase this, now we're basically kind of trimming out this part of the shape. And now we have this plane here that's been created. So we have a plane here and now we have one here and another slope here and so on. Now, if we were to switch this to max, it just gives the opposite effect. Like I said, only the maximum values are kept here in this computation. So really what it looks like is the white values are being pushed here towards the black values. So what I'm gonna do in this particular case is just simply set this here to a min blending mode. And I'm going to just play around with my samples here a bit. So you can see here, uh, based on the quality, so if we drop the samples down pretty low, you can start to see uh, some of the image duplication that's happening here, or some stepping, if you will. So we can have a little value here, here, and here. But as we start to increase the samples, duplicating the image multiple times, we get a more smooth result. So at a value of eight here, this looks pretty good. Keep in mind, the higher the samples, the more computation time it takes to process this node. So in my case here, I'm just gonna leave this uh, maybe at a value of eight, and then just play around with this intensity a bit. So I'm looking to get something uh, more like this here. So we'll take the intensity value to zero. Uh, let's just pull this up. And now this is the kind of result that we're getting here from this slope blur grayscale. And like I said, I'm using this node specifically as a trimming tool. Like I said, similar to using Trim Dynamic Brush and ZBrush to introduce some kind of planes to these shapes. Okay, so now that I have these shapes, I can start to think about scattering these shapes across my ground plane. And like I said, I'm going to use a node called the Shape Splatter to do that. In the next video, we'll pick things up using the Shape Splatter.